I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. Today I will be giving a spoiler-free book review of the Fort Secret Project novel by Brandon Sanderson, The Sunlit Man. Yes, I know, I know. I did mention that I wanted to wait for the physical copy to arrive before I decided to read and review this book. But because it's been so long, <laughs> it's been so long and the book still hasn't arrived, I decided to just, you know what, I will just read and review it and then I will use the physical copy for reread someday in the future. And I will do the same for all the previous three Secret Project novels because at this time, the physical copy still hasn't arrived. So yeah, uh, today I will be giving a spoiler free book review of The Sunnet Man and also, just as a reminder, Although this review will be spoiler free, I will be sharing some interior images from uh, the Sunnet Man. All of them will be spoiler free. I will not include uh, any uh, spoiler images inside this. And I think the Sunnet Man is a detailed exhibition of the bright futures of Sanderson's uh, vision. Sooner or later, fans of the Casmere must not miss reading this dedicated tribute from Brandon Sanderson to his fans. And here we are. It has been one year and a half since Brandon Sanderson and his team broke the record for the number one most funded Kickstarter campaign of all time with his Four Secret Project announcement. Today, for me, the year of Sanderson is over. The Four Secret Project novel, The Sunlit Man, is here and it has been read. My 2023 reading year has been sunnier thanks to the existence and anticipation of each Secret Project novel. To recap, after experiencing a drought of Cosmere since the release of Freedom of War in November 2020, we have in return been blessed with four new Cosmere novels since November 2022. Yes, four Cosmere novels in less than a year. The Lost Metal and three of the four Secret Project novels, Trash of the Emerald Sea, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and finally, The Sunlit Man. Where did The Sunlit Man rank in my excitement level? It was my second most anticipated Secret Project novel, just immediately after Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. As a diehard fan of the Cosmere and the Stormlight Archive, it is imperative for me to read every book related to the series. Even if or when the story does not take place on Roshar, just like this one. This is why The Sunnet Man was my second most anticipated Secret Project novel and the result, well, honestly, I felt mixed about it and I think this will be an unpopular opinion. So let's talk about it. I will start by discussing some required reading first and then I will move on to talk about the stuff that did not work with me first because I want to end this review on a positive note. If you haven't been paying attention, Sanderson has mentioned that starting from The Lost Metal, many new book released in the Cosmere universe will no longer put the Cosmere interconnections as Easter eggs. And I believe that circumstance has been applied to the Sunlit Man. When Tress of the Emerald Sea and Yumi and the Nightmare Painter came out, the reading suggestions and guidelines for Sanderson's Cosmere changed among reviewers. I'm not here to question or discuss any of those reading guides, but I do agree strongly that Tress of the Emerald Sea and Yumi and the Nightmare Painter can be read and highly enjoyed without reading any other Cosmere books first. I have seen other readers reading any one of these two books as their first Sanderson novel and loving the heck out of them. But for The Sunnet Man, I do not think the book can be enjoyed without doing some required reading first. I cannot see it. As Sanderson said, this one is written for the fans of the Cosmere who have been there with him throughout his career and the myriad of cosmic terminologies and connections reflected that. Do not read The Sunlit Man until you read at least all of the books in the Stormlight Archive, including the Dawn Shard novella. This isn't merely to understand what the main characters frequently talk about, but also to enhance your reading experience. I probably would have ended up rating this book a 2.5 or 3 stars if I hadn't read all the books in the Cosmere first. No kidding, I am caught up to the Cosmere. And even then, there were still some frustrations caused by missing parts and contacts that I and every readers cannot attain yet. Because, well, the books where the events, the characters, and I'm referring to aren't published yet. The Sunnet Man is a story about no man. Years ago, he had comrades in arms and a cause to believe in, but now the man who calls himself Nomad knows only a life on the run. 
forced to hop from world to world in the Cosmere whenever the Relentless Night Brigade gets too close, Nomad lands on a new planet and is instantly caught up in a struggle between a tyrant and rebels who want only to escape being turned into mindless slaves, all under the constant threat of a sunrise whose heat will melt the very stones. Unable to understand the language, can he navigate the conflict and gain enough power to leap off world before his mind or body pays the ultimate price? That's the premise of the novel. Like the previous three books, there's a new storyline to tackle on this planet named Canticle, and it could make The Sunnet Man a standalone novel. But in my definition, it is not. As I said, it is possible to read Threats of the Emerald Sea and You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter without reading any other Cosmere books first. One of the main reasons behind this is that the main characters in the new planet are new characters in the Cosmere. We haven't seen them before in any other books. These books were their first appearance. Nomad is a supporting character in the Stormlight Archive. He has been there since the beginning of the series. The Sunnit Man takes place after the events of the unreleased Book 5 of the Stormlight Archive. We don't know how long exactly, but my point is this. His character's background and many parts of his characterizations and development can be read in the Stormlight Archive, not in the Sunlit Man. In the Sunlit Man, the plotline and the significant character development are driven by Nomad's determination to redeem himself over a supposedly set of horrible events that we cannot read yet. And hearing Nomad saying he's not the same man as before, or he is stressing over key events he vaguely referred to over and over again, he became seriously repetitive and annoying after a while. No, Nomad, I do not know what you're talking about. The book hasn't even been written yet. The book has not been published yet. Other than Nomad, there is another main character, Auxiliary, who is always together with Nomad. And again, for the same reason, because I couldn't tell who he was, or because the details of his origin are not written yet, it was difficult for me to feel invested in Ox's predicament and struggle. In most situations, I probably wouldn't have minded withholding information up to this level. But it's a different situation when the main character constantly refers to the event. It truly felt like I was missing at least a book I should read first. Technically, I did. Everyone does. Having the Sunnit Man taking place decades after the Stormlight Archive is the biggest reason why my enjoyment of this book increased and decreased. It felt like Sanderson was telling us some events we should know have happened but without showing them yet. Because of this, the pivotal and big moments in this book did not feel earned or satisfying enough, which usually isn't the case with Sanderson's book. Usually with Sanderson's book, this kind of scene could make me skip a heartbeat with their immense impact. But in here, I was like, oh, um, that was cool, and then I move on to the next page. Fortunately, there were stunning interior illustrations to stamp these scenes in my mind more vividly. But more on this later. Let's talk about the pacing. If you have read the previous three secret projects, you will know Sanderson employed an experimental voice or storytelling in his books. All four novels felt distinct from one another, and I love Tress of the Emerald Sea and Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, but I couldn't get with the frugal wizard. In this case, the tone and the writing style in The Sunlit Man is undoubtedly more attuned to the mainline Cosmere novels, but the pacing is experimental. In The Sunlit Man, Sanderson intentionally utilized breakneck pacing with non-stop action after action after action. And because Sanderson is already very limited in the character development of Nomad and Auxiliary because he must not spoil readers on the events that happen in the Stormlight Archive 5, this pacing made it even more challenging to care and feel invested in the character's journey. There were not enough calm moments to develop the characters. The supporting characters, Elegy and Rebecca, felt forgettable and uninteresting. It is true, I have read all the books in the Stormlight Archive, and again, Nomad has been there since The Way of Kings. However, most of Nomad's in the struggle and conflict here relies on overcoming the events we haven't read yet. But as a precious character in the Stormlight Archive said, despite not knowing the details of the events that transpired, moving forward with the book is the only path I had left for now. That sum up my thoughts on the stuff and elements that did not work for me in this novel. I know, I know, I have been quite negative in this review uh, so far. But rest assured, it is not all disappointing. My opinion is an unpopular opinion. And remember, most of the issues I had lies in the fact that 
I felt like I had skipped reading a few novels that I have to read first before reading The Sunlit Man. I am 90% sure I would love The Sunlit Man more in the future when I reread the book after I read uh, The Stormlight Archive book 5 and also more new books in the Cosmere. For now, what did I love about The Sunlit Man? The benefit from all of this. The compelling element of mysteries and questions raised based on what occurred here were absolutely there, no doubt about it. And with Sanderson intentionally holding out information to not spoil the events of the unwritten or unreleased books, my excitement for the release of the Knights of Wind and Truth, the tentative title for Book 5 of the Stormlight Archive, has soared dramatically. This book works absolutely well as a teaser to make the fans of the Cosmere and Stormlight Archive exponentially more excited for the upcoming Book 5 in November 2024. I was so stressed over not knowing the intricacies of what the hell had happened. And of course, it goes without saying, it was wonderful to visit a new world in the Cosmere universe. I don't think it is an exaggeration to assume that as time goes by and we have more books out in the universe, the future quality of Cosmere books will be bright. That said, the accessibility of the upcoming Cosmere books will, understandably, not be friendly to newcomers to the Cosmere. It has become a constant debate and question to ask where to start with reading Sanderson's books. This past year, it has become more complicated and filled with nuance. Take The Sunlit Man, for example. As Sanderson said, this is a book written for the fans of the Cosmere. And as a fan, I am thrilled with all the inclusions of the terminologies and magic from other worlds I've read. Adonalzium, Hoyt, Skadriel from Mistborn, Sal from Elantris and the Ember Soul, Naltis from Warbreaker, Roshar from the Stormlight Archive, Treno D from Shadows of the Silence in the Forest of Hell, or even those without any dedicated book yet like Yolen. All of this played a part in The Sunlit Man and I loved them all. It felt like Sanderson took us on a quick nostalgic trip regarding what we have known about the Cosmere and my excitement for the future of this universe burns powerfully. Even though I am not satisfied with the missing information, the known callback to scenes, moments, and characters from the books available and already published in the Stormlight Archive was awesome. It made me realize I should pay more attention to Nomad when I reread the Stormlight Archive next year. Despite some of my criticisms, it is impossible to deny that the big moments in the final quarter of The Sunlit Man, accompanied by the color artworks, were badass. Finally, it is time to review the production value of The Sunlit Man Dragonsteel Edition. Unlike the previous three secret projects, where one artist was tasked with illustrating both the cover art and interior arts of one novel, Sanderson and the Dragonsteel team hired three artists to provide their skills for The Sunlit Man. First, we have Kudriaken, the cover artist. In my opinion, out of the four secret project novels, this is my favorite cover art. The red background, Nomad with his sword in the center, gold foiling, and black spray edges are a combination tough to beat. And at the back of the book, we have Elegy in the center with no text to disturb the artwork. Loved it. Hernanda Souza is in charge of the six fully colored illustrations. They are the front and back and papers, and then four more interior arts. All of them look phenomenal. Souza captured the crucial scenes and elevated them with her vivid artwork. Without her contribution, I do not think these scenes would have such a strong effect on me. And the last artist, Nabetse Zitro, illustrated the other 11 black and white interior arts. This is where I felt underwhelmed. Zitro is an incredible artist. Look at his portfolio and you will realize they are mind-blowing. The interior artworks in The Sanded Man reflected only a fraction of Zitro's usual high standard. It is unfortunate, but I honestly think the overall production value of the Sunnet Man Dragon Sale Edition, priced at $40, is still much superior to many other fantasy books in the same price range. Overall, though still great and incredible in subsections, my rating for the Sunnet Man will have to be 3.5 stars for now. This makes the Sunnet Man, just like Elantris, not counting novellas and short stories, the lowest rated Cosmere novel for me so far. Fortunately, although The Sunlit Man was not as impressive as Tress of the Emerald Sea or Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, I have faith that my reading experience of it would improve so much in the future. Plus, 3.5 stars rating is still a good rating in my opinion. As a concluding installment to the year of Sanderson, The Sunlit Man is a fitting concluding installment that allows readers to trace the past we had and experience the future of the universe. I want to thank Brandon Sanderson, Isaac Stewart, the entire Dragonsteel team, and all the artists, Howard Lyons, Steve Argall, Ali Achen, 
uh, Kudryak and uh, Ananda Souza and Abetse Zitro involved in the production of all the Four Secret Project novels. Now, the wait for the Knights of Wind and Truth continues, journey before destination. Let me end this review with a passage of gratitude and parting words from Brandon Sanderson. This is one of my last chances to talk to many of you about the wonderful event that was the Kickstarter. So let me take an extra moment to tell you why I dedicated this book to you, the fans. I sincerely believe that books don't live until they are read. While I think I would write even if nobody was reading, it is who I am, I thrive because I know the stories are being brought to life by all of you. In this, stories are a special kind of art, particularly ones written down. Each of you imagines this book and its characters a little differently. Each of you puts your own stamp on it, making it yours. I don't think a story is quite finished until that has happened to it, until the dream in my head has become a reality, even if briefly in yours. And so this book is yours, as are all of them once you read them. Thank you so much for bringing life to my work and to the Cosmere. So that's it. That's the end of my review for The Sonnet Man. I know that this probably is an unpopular opinion based on what I've seen on Goodreads and online. It seems like many people really love uh, this book. And don't get me wrong, I still liked it. I just felt disappointed in some aspects merely because I still haven't read well, the books that hasn't been written or published yet. I mean, what are the purpose of reading guide if we cannot read the details, right? But anyway, I still like this one. As I said, I'm confident that I would love this book so much more after I read the unreleased books that, well, Nomad and the characters constantly refers to uh, in The Sunnet Man. But do let me know what you think about The Sunnet Man if you have read this book and what do you think about uh, the Kickstarter campaign? I think I will make another dedicated video to all the four Kickstarter campaign, doing my own ranking of the aesthetics, uh, the content, and also the campaign itself. And yeah, I think that's it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.